Hey, welcome to the channel. My name's Troy Maris. I am pumped to have you here. Today on the bench, well, actually right up here, we've got the Comica VM30 microphone. You're listening to it now. This is our industry's first integrated wireless RF module. You can use it as a standalone mic with a wired connection into an audio recorder. I've got a Tentacle Track E up there. Or you could use it with the included wireless receiver to send a signal directly into your camera and bake it into the file. My preference, both. Welcome to Shop Talk. This is the Comica VM30. Let's check it out. When you unbox the VM30, you're gonna find a nice semi-rigid hard case which houses all the accessories it comes with and, and it comes with quite a few to get you rolling. In the base, you're gonna find custom foam cutouts, one for the microphone, another one is gonna be for the wireless receiver module, and in the base, you're also gonna find a, a cold shoe shock mount as well as a mic clip. In the top, you're gonna to find a mesh pocket that houses the rest of the accessories. We got a foam windscreen, a dead cat, a couple audio cables in here. One of them is a TRRS cable for phones and tablets. The other is a TRS for most of our cameras. Some USB cables as well as the instruction manual. That's everything that comes in the box for your VM30. Let's talk more about the mic itself. This has a super cardioid directional pickup pattern, which means it's designed to pick up a pretty focused pattern of audio directly in front of the microphone while rejecting any audio from the sides and from the rear as well. The first thing you'll find on the side of this mic is the TRS slash TRRS output port. This is great for sending an analog signal out to our various devices. This is also an auto sensing port, which means when you plug something in, it'll power on. When you unplug it, it'll auto power off. Up next is the USB-C input and output port, which means we can use USB-C to recharge the internal battery of the microphone, as well as extend the runtime when it's in use. We can also use this port to send a digital signal out to a phone, tablet, or laptop, essentially using this as a self-contained audio interface, which is great for live streaming events or virtual calls. This microphone also features an onboard OLED screen, which lets you visually monitor your audio signals as well as remaining battery power, wireless modes, safety tracks, etc. Above that screen, you're gonna find two buttons. The first one turns the microphone on and activates the wireless signal. The second enables safety tracks as well as low cut filters. On the rear of the mic, you're gonna find a stepless gain knob, which gives you gain adjustments up to plus 12 dB. And that's everything you're gonna see on the outside, but there's more than meets the eye. On the inside, we've got a rechargeable battery, which is rated up to seven hours in wireless transmission mode and up to 50 hours when powered via USB-C. Then on the inside, you've also got that wireless module, which is rated to up to 328 feet line of sight. So let's take a look at the receiver module. On the front, you've got a similar OLED screen, which gives you all your pertinent audio information. On the top, you have two 3.5 millimeter ports, one for signal out, the other for monitoring via headphones. On the side, the orange button here is the power button. It also can act as a, as a mute button. And then you have two gain adjustments down below. On the opposite side, you've got a single USB-C interface for recharging the internal battery as well as using it as a digital interface with your phone, tablet, or laptop. Then on the back, you have a clip, which is good for clipping this onto your cage, a belt. It also fits into your cold shoe mount. That's the receiver. Now that we're on the same page as far as what the system is and what it can do for us from a very technical perspective, let me give you a little bit of my user feedback. So my first impression when I unboxed this was that it seemed to be well built for the most part and something i wanted to note here was that it does utilize a decent amount of plastic both in the microphone module as well as the wireless receiver uh, the receiver does feel uh, light and, and a little bit plasticky um, but it seems to get the job done the microphone unit itself does feel a little bit more durable and, and all of that said i really did put this unit through the ringer i was recently on an expedition up towards the Arctic Circle in Northern Canada, which means I had to have a very stripped down, minimalist and versatile rig. Comica had sent this mic over and it really seemed like it was gonna fit that bill so long as it held up. I gotta say, I really did enjoy having a wireless shotgun mic that could send an audio signal directly back into my camera. And it changed the way that I shot a little bit in that I was able to capture audio that I wouldn't normally have been able to capture. So without, me going on and on just talking about it. Let me show you a little bit of, of, of what we captured while we were up there. Everything you're gonna hear in this next clip came from the VM30. It's kind of what I've been doing so far was, yeah, just 
making something based off of the different sounds that you get up here. I don't know, I don't know what we're going to look like, but. There you have it. Generally, when I create a video like this, I would rely on a lot of stock sound effects to recreate those sounds as best I could in post. So having something like this really opened that up, allowing me to get much more authentic audio recordings from my environment that I was in. And I think it really helps tell that story just that much better. That's all good and well, but the mic also has to be able to capture the human voice well. So far in this video, you've been listening to the VM30 exclusively. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison here to see how this mic stacks up to some other common microphones on the marketplace. Welcome to the side-by-side -side comparison. Here's what we got. Two recordings coming out of the Comica VM30. The first here is the wired connection. We're also sending a wireless feed into our ACAM. Then we have the Sennheiser MKE 400, as well as a Sankin Cost 11 lavalier microphone. Let's put them to the test. How now, brown cow? How now, brown Unique New York. Unique New York. Brick, where did you get a hand grenade? I love lamp. It's the pleats. Comment below if you got the movie reference. There you have it. That's what they sound like side by side. All right, it's that time. My favorite part of the video, pros and cons of the VM30. The first pro is the internal rechargeable battery with a battery level indicator. I've used a lot of these types of mics in the past that run on replaceable AAA or D-type batteries and they don't feature a battery level indicator. As a result, I've had mics die on me mid-shoot. I don't worry about that as much now because it's got great battery life as well as a display indicator and I can recharge it on the go. So that's a real pro. The next pro is going to be the auto power on, power off feature. When you plug a 3.5 mil cable into this microphone, it will turn itself on, and vice versa, when you unplug that cable, it'll turn itself off, severely lowering the chances that you pack this mic the night before a shoot, forget to turn it off, get there the next day, and you have a dead mic. So we love to see that. My next and final pro is the simultaneous record options. Now let me unpack that for you. That means I can send a wired signal into my audio recorder, my technical track E, which records in 32-bit float. This acts as my safety track because in 32-bit float, I can never clip this microphone. But I can also send a wireless signal directly into my camera. And as long as I didn't clip anything in camera, I can use that track and not have to worry about syncing anything in post. That said, I wanna talk about one of the biggest cons with this system, at least as of this recording. When you attach this wireless receiver module to your camera body itself, you're gonna get a little bit of feedback or white noise in your in-camera audio recording. That comes from a little bit of signal interference. Let me show you what we're talking about. So I wanted you to be aware of that. It is a relatively uniform signal, which means it cleans up well in post, but it does require that additional step. Editor Troy here, there's one more count I wanted you to be aware of. Twice now I've experienced about a three to four second audio dropout in the wired recording with the VM30. Here it is, for this module. It's rated, I haven't figured out exactly what the cause is for this, nor have I spoken to Kamuk about it just yet but it has been my experience. Like I said, it's happened to me twice now, and I wanted you to be aware of that moving forward. So my final thoughts, how am I gonna use this mic moving forward? I gotta say, I've really come to appreciate the versatility of this mic. It doesn't sound quite as good as my Sennheiser 416, but I don't expect it to. There are a couple of quality of life improvements that I'm really drawn to though. The wireless nature, the lightweight footprint, not needing phantom power and XLR cables. It's got a place. When I need quick, this is gonna be my answer. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. Happy shooting out there. God bless.